Hi guys, my name is Anuj Jindal. Welcome to Morning Tales. The picture that you see out here is Zuko Valley in Nagaland. Doesn't look like India, does it? Well, India is and has uh, a lot of unexplored places which you can travel to. So all the bikers out there, all the travelers out there, these are the places that you should be exploring. Let's start with the questions for today. The first question is, who will head the panel set up by RBI to review ATM free structure? ATM fee structure, who is the head of the panel? A six member committee has been created to review the entire ATM fee structure. If you know the answer, please provide it in the comment section below. The options are VG, VJ, VG Kanan, sorry, Nandan Nilekani, Sunil Mehta, Suresh Sethi and Rajkiran Raiji. These kind of questions are important for phase one of RBI, SEBI, NABARD and other banking examinations. So this is for viewers who are watching this video for the first time today. Okay, so these kind of questions are directly asked in phase one of these examinations. Uh, just an additional information for you guys. So who is the head of this committee and what is the primary purpose of this committee? The answer to this question is A, V. G. Kanan. And the primary purpose of this committee is to review the existing structures that we have and the cost patterns that we have related to ATM transactions. The purpose of this committee is to review the present rules and regulations that we have with the objective of promoting, promoting ATM transactions. And this has been identified, it has been identified that the number of ATM transactions in the country has been increasing consistently and therefore it's time that we review the fee structures which are to be levied on people for using ATMs. Uh, additional information, recently RBI also made certain changes in the RTGS and NEFT transactions and what it did was it completely eliminated completely eliminated any kind of levies, completely eliminated any kind of, uh, uh, you know, payments or fees, fees, sorry, that are to be made if you uh, are involving yourself or if you're using RTGS or NEFT facilities of the banks. The purpose is to improve and enhance and promote these kind of transactions more and more among the people. I hope you have understood it. Uh, a very important question, what is the current repo rate? A lot of you must be aware about it. Recently, the RBI and its Monetary Policy Committee decided to reduce it by 25 basis points BPS. Uh, a quick question, who is the head or who is the uh, present governor of Reserve Bank of India? If you know it, provide it in the comment section below. Before I answer it, let me answer it for you. If you don't know it, the answer is Shakti Kant Das. Shakti Kant Das is the governor of RBI presently. Uh, some more important things. Uh, so RBI has now changed its stance to accommodative. There are three stances if you are not aware about them. Accommodative, neutral, accommodative number one, neutral number two and calibrated, calibrated tightening number three. Now these are all uh, uh, you know, stances that RBI take with uh, uh, with the purpose of sending out a message to the market. Accommodative stance says that RBI expects that growth might go down in the future, but inflation will be stable. So inflation will be stable, but growth might go down and therefore RBI will be taking an accommodative stance wherein RBI will be reducing the interest rates so that credit availability in the economy can increase when credit availability in the economy increases, then growth or economic growth in the economy also increases. Neutral stance says that RBI is still looking at how the market is responding. It might increase the interest rates or it might also reduce the interest rates. And third, we have calibrated tightening which says according to which RBI is expecting the 
interest rates to go up because inflation is not stable inflation is expected to spike up therefore rbi might increase the interest rates in order to control the credit supply in the economy because more credit means more growth but at the same time more supply of money which increases inflation in the economy i hope you have understood now what are the differences between accommodative neutral and uh, calibrated tightening stances that rbi has let's come to the next question something that we started with zuko valley has been declared a plastic free zone on the occasion of world environment day which state that does the valley belong to which state does the valley belong to i answered the question for you when we started with the session the answer is c nagaland nagaland is the state to which zuko valley belongs now some interesting facts for you which can also be asked in the examination another question which is the first state zuko valley is a zone which is the first state in the country which has been declared plastic free state the answer if you know provide it before i write it out here the answer is sikkim which is the first district which has been declared as a uh, plastic free zone please answer it if you know it the answer to this question is kannur where is it it's in kerala so these are the important questions that might also be asked when is world environment day i am not answering it for you let me have the answers it's held in june every year let me have the answers from you when is the world environment day observed or celebrated every year next question which state has launched the first pm emissions trading scheme to control air pollution emission levels by industries pm here does not stand for prime minister pm here stands for particulate matter pm here stands for what particulate matter what is the state the state is gujarat gujarat has started a emission trading scheme the purpose of which is to control air pollution emission levels so how is it going to work this chart explains uh, very simply exactly how is it going to work at the top we will have a regulator the regulator will be in touch with different industries which are uh, polluting the environment to a certain extent now it will create a cap overall cap for different industries let's say uh, i have a sort uh, i am a businessman and uh, let's say my industry is the industry the company that i have is for is a chemical industry chemical company okay and the cap that has been provided to me that has been allocated to me is let's say 100 million tons of co2 every year 100 million tons of co2 every year i am just making it up just for an example sake now this is the allocation that, that i have and uh, there are a lot of other uh, businessmen out there who have uh, businesses in different industries and they have different allocations so 100 million tons a year that is the alloc allocation that i've been provided i am an environment friendly guy i know how to uh, work around the chemical uh, companies and try and reduce the emissions and i end up spending only 50 million tons per year out of this allocation and i still have 50 million tons spare uh, as something that i could have used in terms of polluting the environment so what i can do is i whatever is left uh, 50 million tons is used 50 million tons is left i can trade it in the market i can go to the market and i can say let's say this is another person another businessman who has uh, used 150 million tons so he has to buy 50 million tons from the market because he's used over his allocation this was something that was introduced way back by manmohan singh also during his prime ministership but it did not become successful at that time and the same has been evolved uh, and uh, you know started again by gujarat so it's the same uh, process if you're not aware about it you can read or in more i hope i've made it clear if you Uh, pollute less than you should have or the less than your allocation then you save money you can sell it in the market if you pollute more you have to go to the market and buy that excess that you have polluted the environment let's come to the next question for today who has launched the reptiles of northern western ghats book containing data of more than 123 endangered species of reptiles of the western ghats the answer to this question is tata power and ila foundation Uh, the writer of this book is dr satish pandey 
that's all that's important for this particular question two more questions that could be asked how many endangered species and which area has been covered by this particular book western guards uh, published by launch by tata power and ela foundation writer satish pande how many endangered species 123 that's all let's come to the last question for today and i'm not going to provide you with the answers i am ask going to ask you to provide me with the answers in the comment section below if you don't know about it read about it if you know about it very good the question is where is mount etna located where is mount etna located the reason that it has been in news is because it is one of the world's most active volcanoes and it is in europe a tip for you it is in europe so all those who are very well versed with the maps of the world should be able to answer this question very very easily now that i've given this tip i hope you like this particular session this is all for today if you did please subscribe to the uh, channel and do not forget to press the bell icon that's very important because every day at 8 am we come out with morning tales before starting with your day it's important that you watch something like this which is informative knowledgeable at the same time so that when you go and read the newspaper it's much more easier for you to understand what the newspaper wants you to uh, understand from it all the very best take care have a nice day